Hey up lads and lasses, Damfire here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. So sorry about no video last week, uh, I was waiting on information on the Thunderbolt stuff which uh, I was told was going to come out last week and then didn't come out this week, last week. So uh, they kind of like threw off my plan a little bit uh, with that. But we have now got the second uh, gameplay preview for the Angulum Adventure Agreement which is the new server type so I thought I'd go through this with you uh, today. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Dear Explorers, greetings. In the previous chapter of the gameplay preview, we introduced the historical background, environmental conditions and relevant agreement issued by Noma in the Angulum Cluster. This time we'll be introducing how to form terms, teams to register for the Angulum Adventure Agreement and some adventure gameplay content. So, registering and teaming up. The registration process of the Angulum Adventure Agreement is unlike in the previous agreements as it includes steps to redeem special passes and form teams. The specific process is as follows. Redeem the Angulum Pass, register in the Lagrange Network, invite explorers in the star system to form a five-person team. Wait until it is time to leave for, Angulum, for the Angulum Cluster. That sounds really interesting. Okay. It's also worth noting that registering for the Angulum uh, Adventure Agreement will not affect the Explorer's gameplay content in their current star system. After leaving for the cluster, Explorers will simultaneously be in charge of development activities in the current star system and the expedition in the Angulum Cluster. That's cool, so you can be in two servers at once. Kind of like having, um, you know, a bajillion alts hit soon um angulum pass this pass is issued by noma shipping group and explorers who have uh, have this pass will be granted access to the stargate leading to the angulum cluster the angulum pass can be redeemed from the dawn store for a certain amount of dawn points explorers in all hub systems node recovery systems trojite crystal collection systems and data rescue agreements can redeem this pass and register in the lagrange network Registering for the agreement and teaming up, after obtaining the Angulum Pass, explorers can sign the Angulum Adventure Agreement in the Lagrange network of their current star system. After signing the agreement, they can invite other explorers to join their expedition team. Invited explorers will be need to have a dispatch certificate. Uh, certificate. So this is really interesting that they're sort of introducing these small teams uh, as it were so i wonder what the the capacity of the servers are how many there will be running um and if it's only just the five players that that'd be interesting like a pure pve experience you go in with your five mates kind of like a you know mmo style dungeon or you know something of that nature or if there will be you know other guys jumping in as well on different teams so you know you've got some inter-team battley stuff going on um it could make it uh, very, very competitive if it's the latter, as you're, you know, pitting against, you know, five other players only. Uh, so it's not all about the numbers game and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it definitely sounds really quite interesting. It should be noted that due to the difficulty of the exploration and complex environments of the Angulum and Cluster, this agreement requires explorers to form a team of five before they can set off. The team will be disbanded when it has insufficient members. So you do need to try and get, you know, your five guys together before you sign uh, this uh, and then try and all, you know, jump in at the same time. Team Shared Camp. The Noma shipping group has established a large gathering area around the Lagrange Gate in an area where the warp parameters are stable. It has built thousands of team bases here to provide a short-term settlement service for explorer teams who have come to explore Angulum. So we can see here we've got like a main port here and then you have your five smaller ports here uh, which are all I'm guessing the player specific ports. So I wonder what the camp specifically for. Maybe it acts as like a, um, your defense point potentially. In this camp, explorers can produce and repair ships in preparation for the expedition. Blueprint sharing. In the camp, explorers 
who are on the same team will share blueprints and ship production line facilities. When using the production line, explorers can select some blueprints to configure on the production line, and other members of the same team can use the same blueprint for production, but the production quantity will still be limited by service restrictions. When multiple explorers are using the same production line, production will be carried out in the order of the queue, which means explorers will need to wait in line. Since utility ships cannot be used to obtain resource packs in the Anglum cluster, explorers will need to collect ship production resources during expeditions. So this is really interesting. So having, you know, a whale or two on your team is going to really help you out here if you're a little bit short on uh, blueprints. Again, they are service restrictions. I wonder if that's per player, uh, the service restriction, or if that is if you're using this guy's blueprint and you build two, then he's got two less to build himself. Um, so it's still really useful. There are multiple uh, ships that have two very good variants. Uh, Reliat, for example, the Energy Torp's very powerful. The Stealth Torp, uh, Stealth version is also very powerful. Um, so, you know, you got some of the Mega Whales that, you know, might have like 400 tech points or 300 tech points um, left. Well, 200 tech points in frigates and stuff. Uh, but you're able to share the blueprints with them, which is quite nice. Auxiliary ship gameplay. Under the constraints of the complex environmental conditions of the Angulum Cluster, conventional expedition teams will find it difficult to complete the expedition smoothly. As auxiliary ships have the characteristics of supply and production on demand, expeditionary teams that have auxiliary ships really shine in the expedition, making great gains in past reconnaissance operations. The Nova Shipping Group will issue auxiliary ships to each explorer, and explorers can create an expeditionary expedition fleet they think is most suitable for exploring the Triangle area. So yeah, it's going to be, I'm guessing, a temporary auxiliary ship blueprint here. Uh, there's nothing really we can do about that, which is a bit of a shame, because I'd, I'd like to have seen a new proper uh, auxiliary ship come in, but it is what it is. Uh, and it sounds like, you know, if you have the other auxiliary ship blueprint unlocked, uh, it's going to be a little bit easier for you, uh, which is a pain, because I don't. Uh, so, going on expeditions to find resource packs. Setting off from camp due to warp reverberation, the space warping parameters in the triangle area formed by the three stars in the Angulum Cluster has found, a, uh, found to have high entropy, leaving very few stable warp zones in the area. To faci facilitate explorers' expeditions, the Noma Shipping Group has provided temporary stable warp co coordinates to each camp so that explorers can warp drive into the triangle area. Okay, so it's not like no warp at all there is warp it's just limited to specific areas and specific zones um which is fine um i like the fact that you you know you're outside the triangle area so you're venturing in to do your expeditions and then you're jumping back out um what does it say here in the choose destination the stable warping areas are marked on the map please choose where you are warping in Tension affected by stellar gravity, the area closer to the stars tend to be more unstable. Consider your safety. Each coordinate uh, will set a limit on the capacity of fleets passing by. Each coordinate will be will set a limit on the capacity, capacity of fleets setting by. Interesting. So the further out you go, the smaller your fleet has to be. Is that how that's working? We can see here that we've got, um, I'm guessing these are the other team members dotted around the map on their expeditions. A couple of guys going off and we have one guy sort of setting off his um, route to the, the number three. And then down here we have low limit on command points and higher limits on command points. Yeah, so some of these warp points, uh, you might be limited to maybe 200. CP and obviously with the higher ones you might be able to go all the way up to say 400 so that's really uh really quite interesting that's definitely like a completely new mechanic to play around with uh and it does mean that I'm gonna have to try and work out fleets that are better off in certain situations the fact you can jump into this from any server actually is really nice as well it means that uh, I don't have to sit around in the hub and wait. We can jump into a server and start that server off and then jump into this to have a bit of fun uh, as well. Uh, 
Finding resource packs. The triangle area is filled with lots of floating wreckages, most of which are discarded parts of ships or buildings that were destroyed by the impact of the high radiation jets. Lots of useful resources can be obtained from collecting these wreckages. Since there are no utility ships to provide mining support during the exploration of the Angulum Cluster, collecting wreckages has become the primary means of obtaining ship production resources. And that's it for this chapter. Thank you for watching. In the next part, we'll introduce the Relic Exploration gameplay and the rating criteria of the Angulum Adventure Agreement. Stay tuned. So we have one more bit of info off them, uh, and then this gets released. No doubt what will happen, uh, because they always do this. They'll give us that information, and then they'll release it the same day anyway. Um, <laughs> seems to be what they do anyway. So yeah, really interesting. Five-man squads. I don't know if that's multiple squads that uh, will be in. Um, it hasn't mentioned anything like that. This has um, a really interesting vibe about it with these low command points, high command points, specific warp points. Um, you know, we've got this new auxiliary ship, which might be really interesting. Maybe it's able to build cruisers or something. That could be really useful when you're out and about losing ships to pirates or whatever we're having to face down here. Nothing of that nature has been uh, mentioned. Uh, the joint build area with shared blueprint. There, there's a lot going on in, in this server type. And I mean, they've even just stated that they haven't even touched on the relic stuff. So there's even more to go on uh, as well here. So this is going to be rather interesting gameplay. Uh, and yeah, I'm absolutely looking forward to this because this Node recovery and Trojai and data, they're all relatively good. I mean, the node recovery and Trojai are more or less the same thing. It's just your mining uh, node recovery. It's just pure occupancy. Uh, the data, a little bit slow, a little bit boring uh, for me personally. I know some people do like it, uh, but, you know, is what it is. Uh, but that was, you know, a bit more varied and interesting gameplay. It's different from the Node and Trojite. And then again, we have some elements of the data in here, but loads of different elements uh, being added as well. Uh, so yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely looking forward to this. So stay tuned. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I will be covering uh, the Thunderbolt stuff when that eventually drops. Um, I'm hoping this week. Uh, we've got some more Angulum Adventure Agreement um, stuff to come out as well. Uh, I'm still working on the clan stuff and the uh, guild uh, buffs and stuff. The current moment, more or less, the clans seem really, really strong. Uh, guilds, not quite so much, but the building's a little bit more useful, a little bit more interesting, in my opinion. Um, but unfortunately, uh, I didn't manage to get to record uh, much of it because uh, my alt wasn't able to take a city. You need a city to be able to build the warehouse. And then... The warehouse I did build got blown up, so uh, and on my main account, um, and then the server ended. So I, I unfortunately didn't get time to uh, record that. So, but it is coming. I am working on it. Um, I have gone through the buffs a little bit previously for the clans uh, and the guilds and stuff. So you can go check those out if you're interested. Uh, but I'll definitely do something a bit more in depth uh, when I can. So again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you next time.